Clarksdale, Mississippi, 1932. Ten-year-old James Moon didn't know how much longer he could wait for his daddy to finish up his business in the store. The sun was almost directly overhead and he was hot and thirsty. He'd only been wearing his brand new overalls, starched stiff as cardboard, for half an hour, but they were already beginning to chafe his thighs raw. And worst of all, he was busting for a pee, shifting uncomfortably from foot to foot, like that was somehow going to help. Through the plate glass window, he could see his daddy arguing with the man he called the Jew over the price of the sacks of feed and seed he was buying for the farm. Judging by all the arm waving that was going on, neither Mr. Bienbaum nor Reverend Solomon Moon looked like they were planning to budge any time soon. Gazing down the block, he saw a small slender man in an immaculate grey suit and snap brim hat stroll onto the corner. He had a guitar slung behind him. As James watched, the man stooped to place the hat, crown downwards, on the sidewalk beside him and scrabble in his pants pocket for a few coins to toss into it. He pulled a metal flask from inside his jacket and raised it to his lips, taking two or three long swallows before stowing it again. Then he swung the guitar forward and produced something from his jacket pocket, which he carefully fitted onto the pinky of his left hand. Then he started to play. The sound James heard almost made him wet his pants. Even at almost midday on a busy, bustling street, with folks going about their business and mules and automobiles passing by, the quivering, sliding moan the man was conjuring from his guitar strings cast a chill shadow over James, like the sun was still shining for everybody else, but some spooky old cloud was blocking it off just for him. It was like the sound was a cold hand reaching deep down inside him and gently squeezing his heart. The man raised his head, looked round him. For a second he seemed to be staring straight at James, his eyes flashing as his gaze met the boys. James felt like those eyes, one wide open, one oddly hooded, were drilling right inside him, every part of him lay bare. He was actually shivering now, his rubbed raw thighs and bursting bladder forgotten. Now the man was dropping the glass cylinder back into his jacket pocket, swiftly retuning his guitar, was starting to play a different song. He began to sing in an eerie high moan which sounded just like his guitar. Got to keep moving, got to keep moving, he sang, blues falling down like hail. Got to keep moving, got to keep moving, hellhound on my trail. Then his daddy was wrenching at his arm, shoving him so he nearly lost his footing and fell. What you doing, boys? Daddy thundered. I told you'd be ready to help me move these sacks to the car. He dragged James into the store and set him to moving a sack of cattle feed, near as big as he was, to his daddy's rusted Model T Ford. I'm sorry, sir, James said when the cargo was loaded. I was listening to the man singing. Solomon Moon didn't say a word as he drove them to the barber shop. I need to pee, James murmured into the humming void of his father's grim silence. You can go at the barber shop, his father said after a while. He parked the car outside Sam's barber shop and gripped James by the arm. Do you know what that man was doing? He rumbled. He was doing the devil's work. He was trying to drag your soul down to hell. But he was just singing and playing guitar, James protested, and I was just listening. The devil live in the guitar, growled Solomon Moon, and the worst music you can play on the guitar is the blues. That's what that man was playing, the blues, the devil's own music. Every blues singer worked for the devil, and out of all the blues singers round here, that man is the evilest of them all. I spent ten years trying to bring you upright and raise you in the ways of the Lord, and now I find you on the street. But, sir, you done told me to wait there. Quiet, boy. I find you on the street listening to the man who sold his soul to the devil. Just standing there, not even saying a prayer to save yourself, while he tried to take your soul, too. Boy, when we get home, we're going to have ourselves a talk. James knew what that signified. It would be years before he realised that having a talk didn't always mean getting a whooping. 
In the barber shop, the guys were talking shit and playing the dozens. The air was thick with smoke and a couple of them were taking discreet nips from hip flasks or brown bag bottles. Everything went quiet when the Reverend stalked in with James, his bladder troubling him again, waddling painfully at his daddy's heels. Morning, Reverend, Sam said, and what can I do for you this fine day? Let the boy use your bathroom and then you cut his hair good and short, Solomon Moon told him. I'll be back for him in an hour, get my own hair cut and I don't want him hearing nothing that he shouldn't be hearing. He whacked a warning finger at James, turned on his heel, and walked out. Whoa, said one of the customers. There surely goes a real, true man of the Lord. James wasn't sure why the other men laughed at that. In the bathroom, he scrabbled frantically at the stiff new denim, splitting a thumbnail, attempting to rest the metal buttons through the unyielding fabric, spotting his fresh overalls before threading his stubbornly retracted Lil Feng through the fly, like pulling a marshmallow through a slot machine. And just in time to avoid embarrassing himself by soaking his clothing and puddling the floor, unleashing a gusher so powerful that the sense of relief almost made him pass out. But soon Sam had him safely sat up in the big chair, napkin tied around his throat as the clippers buzzed around his ears and neck. And what you been doing today, the young man? Sam asked him. We've been in town shopping, James told him. I got me new overalls and my daddy bought feed and seed from Mr. Bienbaum. And I saw a man singing and playing guitar on the corner, but my daddy got angry. Sam laughed. That man you saw, did he have a real good suit on him? Nice hat? Have kind of a high, shaky voice? James nodded. The men chuckled quietly and gave each other meaningful looks. That be little Robert, just got back to town. He had him a lot of names, old Robert, being Robert Dodds, Robert Willis, Robert Spencer. But he go in by his natural father's name now. My daddy said Robert is a real bad man, said he worked for the devil. Oh, Robert had him some troubles, that's for sure. A few years back, his wife died giving birth. She weren't even but 16 years old. Robert wasn't even there. He's somewhere out in the country playing his guitar. He played good, don't he? Well, he didn't always. Old Sonny House told me Robert used to be the worst guitar player he ever heard. But since he come back, he'd been playing like a different man. Now I heard tell, Sam lowered his voice into a deep, hoarse whisper. The little Robert wants to play the blues so bad that one night when the moon didn't shine, he took himself down to the crossroads, way out down where 49 meets 61. And dead on moon night, he met the devil there. And the devil took Robert's guitar and tuned it, and played a song and then gave it back to him. And after that, Robert could play just about everything he wanted to. But the devil... Sam bugged his eyes out and waved his hands, lowering his voice even further. The devil got his soul. Aw, oh, man, one of the guys interjected. That's just bull. You talking like an old woman now. Little Robert just been practicing and learning is all. And you don't want to be feeding the boy up without all that old-time conjure sh nonsense. You just going to get him in trouble with his daddy. As Sam's busy scissors fluttered and snipped around his scalp, James could still hear little Robert's whining, desolate voice and guitar reverberating in his head. Get to be able to sing and play like that, and all you've got to do is sell your soul to the devil? Sounded like a pretty good deal to him. After all, he never seen the devil. Didn't even know if there really was a devil. But he'd seen little Robert, all dressed up sharp, even standing on that dusty, old, stinking, mule-shit, spattered corner. He looked like a million dollars. One day I'm going to do that, he told himself. Be dressed up slick, going to play guitar, and when I sing and play, my music going to make folks feel stuff deep down inside. But I ain't going to be working for no devil. I ain't going to take no souls down to burn. Just steal a little fire to warm them up a little on cold nights. Cook up some soul food, make them feel good. So what name will Robert go by now, he asked. I told you. Now he done took his natural father's name. Go by Robert Johnson. Robert Johnson. James Moon filed that one away. He was going to remember that name his whole life. In his head, once again, he was hearing the song the man had been singing. He could hear every word, every note, even every breath.
Got to keep moving. Got to keep moving. Hell, hell.